In order to define basis risk, we first need to talk about what is the basis. Now, basis can be described in this formula here. So basis equals the spot price of the asset to be hedged minus the futures price of the contract used to hedge. And so we can shorten these by calling basis B, saying that it's equal to the spot price S minus the futures price F. Now let's just walk through this with a practical example. So let's say, for example, we're a company that mines gold and we can forecast that in about two months from now, we're going to mine a certain number of ounces of gold. But we don't want to take price risk on the changes in gold prices over that two month time period. So in this example, the spot price would just be the current price of gold, like right now. And then the futures price on the contract used to hedge it would be the futures price for a gold contract that ends two months from now. And so the basis would be the difference between those two prices at this point in time. Before we can get into basis risk, let's really quickly discuss what is a perfect hedge. A perfect hedge is a hedge that satisfies three conditions. The first one is that the asset whose price is to be hedged is the exact same as the asset underlying the futures contract. If we go back to our example, talking about a gold mining company, Let's say that what they need to hedge is the price of one ounce of gold. That would be the asset whose price is to be hedged. And then if the hedge criteria, the perfect hedge criteria was satisfied, we'd say that there is a futures contract out there where the asset underlying that futures contract is also one ounce of gold. That would satisfy this condition. The second condition that must be satisfied for a perfect hedge to exist is that there is no uncertainty as to the exact date when the asset will be bought or sold. So with our gold mining example, we said we needed to sell this gold two months from now. So let's say we know exactly two months from now on the day we're going to have to sell that gold, that would satisfy this condition. The third criteria that must be satisfied in order for a perfect hedge to exist is that the hedge doesn't require the futures contract to be closed out before its delivery month. Now, if all three of these conditions are satisfied, then we have a perfect hedge and there is no basis risk whatsoever. Our futures contract underlying our spot contract offsets the spot contract exactly. However, if any one of these three conditions is not satisfied, there will be basis risk. And in the real world, there typically is not a perfect hedge that exists. So with derivative contracts, when used in hedging, there will be basis risk in most real world scenarios. Now let's illustrate an example of a perfect hedge with no basis risk on a graph. So on this graph, we're looking at the vertical axis is the price of these assets. And then the horizontal axis is the time. So we're going to start at T equals one, which will just be today. And so we can find the basis at time one using this formula here, right? Basis at time one equals the spot price at time run minus the, for, uh, the forward price at time one. So if we draw this up like this, we'll see right here is F1. If we keep going up, we'll see right here, this is the spot price at time one, so S1. And then right here, the difference between the two will be equal to b1 now as time changes we see that the spot price and the futures price keep changes so we'll have different basis at different points like this and this but then eventually we'll get to the end and if there is a perfect hedge these should always converge right so the spot price at time two so this will be the maturity should always come together and equal each other so the basis at time two with this perfect hedge should be equal to zero because these two will exactly offset each other. 
Now, another way that we can define basis risk is the uncertainty associated with B2, right? And with the perfect hedge, there is no uncertainty associated with B2, so there's no basis risk. Now, let's look at an example on a graph that is not a perfect hedge. And let's go back to our gold mining example from earlier. So let's say we know that at time one, the initiation of this for, uh, forward contract, we know S1 is here, we know F2 is here, so our basis one, our B1, is just gonna be the difference right there. And we can see that with this formula. But now, we're not certain about B2, because let's say on that forward contract, we wanted to hedge an ounce of gold, for example, but for whatever reason, there were no available forwards on gold, so maybe we had to settle with a forward on platinum. But the price of platinum doesn't move exactly with the price of gold. So now we could be looking at a situation where our price of gold, S1, over time is moving like this. And then our forward contract on platinum is actually moving like this. And now at the end, we end up with this B2, that's this large negative value for B2 here. And we're seeing that this basis risk is this uncertainty associated with B2 when we don't have a perfect hedge. And we can't offset our underlying spot position perfectly as a miner of gold.